For her hair, I bought a bunch of red yarn, like all the shades of red possible. Today, we are going to make ourselves a movie accurate Jessie. Let's go! Hey guys, Zerbu back here again. After a disappointing failure on Woody, I decided to cleanse my artistic palette and try my hands on Jessie. I've already gone through both the Jessies that I'll be using today, link here and here. So let's not waste any more time. Removing the head and the voice box is not hard. You guys are smart people, yeah, you can figure it out on your own, right? So let's start with the head sculpt. This 3D model is ripped from the Toy Story 3 video game by Johnny from DeviantArt. It's a low resolution model, but it's going to be a time saver. We don't need her head, which I can easily remove, and her body as well, so that's gone. What remains is her face, which I can then modify with reference to screenshots of her toy mode face in the movie. Just nudging her eyebrows in place, making sure to check it from different angles, and now we can open her mouth to force out a smile. Not only can we move the features, we can also dig into the digital clay and give some definition to her smile, as well as her ears. Besides sharpening details, we can smooth them out like what we are doing to her teeth now. I also used a cylindrical tube and bent it into shape for her eyelashes. And then with a few clicks, I just duplicated and mirrored the eyelash over to the other side. Can you do that with real clay? To make way for real yarn, I removed her digital hair and replaced it with a sphere so that we can glue on the hair later on. And now we can print. I've already talked about all this printing shit in my 1-6 scale creations playlist right here. So we'll wait for the printer to do its magic. Let's work on the body. This pull string ring is stupidly huge. Maybe they didn't want it to be a choking hazard for kids, but I'm no kid, so time to find a replacement for it. I bought this toy from eBay loose and it's been heavily used by Shilo. Hi Shilo, I hope you're not watching this video because I'm gonna rip your door apart. Anyway, we need to clean her. She's really dirty and old and her fabric is fraying. So I decided to snip the lint balls away. But when I tried removing the dirt marks from the body with my handy dandy alcohol, it didn't work. No matter how much I rub, it refuses to come off. So there's no choice, I gotta wash it with detergent. But let's remove the accessories first. The belt is secured by this fastener inside the body, which is rather tight. The buttons on the sleeves are just sewn on, easy peasy. But the buttons on the body are secured with the same irritating fasteners, and I couldn't get them off, so I just cut the ends of the buttons off, since I don't plan to use it anyway. And now you can tell how disgusting this toy is. The cloth under the button is actually white. So what you think was white previously, is actually yellow. Well, in the washing machine you go. We set it on quick wash for about 20 minutes, and since we have some time on our hands, let's sit back and watch some South Park. No! Pop procrastinating. Fine, I'm gonna fix the head, which was from the signature collection Jesse. It is also really old and has paint marks on it. So I decided to give the alcohol a second chance. Hmm, so far so good. There's also a red mark on top of the head. And it's gone. I guess the alcohol is good for paints, but not for dirt. Now to replace the strings with a tougher white leather string that I got from China. Okay, I just gotta try to remember the pattern. Up, down, up, down. Got it, I think. The thickness is close, so it should work. Okay, so up, down, up, down. Wait, wait a minute. No wonder it looks so weird. It's supposed to wrap around the border, stupid. Looks great. See how tough the material is? and those holes in between, just like the movie. Knock, knock. Oh, what's that? It's been 20 minutes. Time to hang her out to dry and move on to her belt buckle. The issue with this is that the details are not crisp enough. So by going over it with a couple layers of black wash, that should give her a little weathered look while highlighting the details. Oh, how convenient. The prints are ready. I used a Form 3 printer from Form Labs to get this printed. 
It's really reliable but it's also quite expensive if you want peace of mind and not deal with all the technical aspects of printing. You might want to invest in a formlet printer to achieve amazing prints like this. I don't want to bore you with the details but you can tell that all the branches have been removed and now I'm just cleaning up the residues left behind and sanding them smooth. Yeah, real fun stuff really. Yep, still sanding. And after filling up one of the holes, we are ready to paint. The issue with Woody previously was that the material was flexible, so it didn't accept paint well, and the water slide decals failed at the very last stage of completion. So for Jesse, let's go straight to the eyes. I don't know why, but white paint is really hard to apply evenly with a brush, so I decided to mask everything and just go over it with an airbrush instead. Oh, I'm a mummy! Sorry. It looks pretty good. After filling up the areas that the airbrush missed, I went over the teeth as well. And this is where you can see what I meant by it's hard to achieve an even coverage with white paint. Anyway, here's my nightmare. I designed it on Photoshop and printed them on water slide decals, but the problem I had with it was that it tests easily and it likes to fall onto itself. But then, I came across this guy called Stan, who also uses decals for the eyes, and he did it perfectly. He shared some tips with me telling me to apply layers of clear coat on the decal so that it's easier to work with, and, and it worked! Please go ahead and watch his video. He's a traditional sculptor who did everything with clay, something I can never do, so mad respect. Well, now the issue is that it's too tough. The layers of clear coat made it less flexible, and it took a while for it to lay flat on the round surface of the eyeballs, which led to a little tearing, as you can see on the left eye. Fret not, we can always fix it with a little paint, and it's great again. Since we're already here with black paint, let's cover her eyelashes, make some paint for her eyebrows, paint them, and it's time to revisit the body. The washing machine did a great job removing most of the dirt, but you can still see the circles that eluded the attacks of the brown dirt. I was very tempted to put it through another wash, but I don't want to risk losing more of the yellow. As you can see here, part of the red rope has been chewed off by the washing, and some of the yellow part is gone. Which is a bummer, but I thought of a way to fix it. I went over it with some oil pastels, cause it's more forgiving than paints, which could sometimes be too watery or too thick. This is just some powder that you can wipe off easily. The rope was an easy fix too, just a few careful dabs of red paint and it looks decent from afar. So this 2009 Jessie is rather thick, cause her balm has to accommodate the battery pack of the voice box. Now that it's been removed, I want to use the belt to tighten her waist, and I will need to poke some new holes for the belt buckle to slide back into her body. Just a few pokes and a few cuts here and there, and it's done. For the buttons, we have some pearl eye snaps and some white ones. I don't really like either one because the design is wrong. There should be a more defined indent, but for now, the pearlized one is still more accurate, so let's just go with that. It's really simple, just poke it through the fabric and push the prongs down to secure them. But I'm getting ahead of myself because I want to fix the red details first. If I'm not wrong, it's supposed to be a red satin thread border, so I got some here. After cutting this shitty red border off, I realized that it's a good opportunity for me to fix this nasty green printed thread because it's supposed to be white. White! Wow. So that's what I'll be attempting to do, going over it with an actual white thread. Unfortunately, the green paint is still visible, which I tried to paint over with white paint, but failed. Doesn't matter, moving on to the red thread. I just glued them on carefully, four times, as simple as that. And we are back to the buttons. Well, call me lazy, but for Jesse, I decided to just put in a slow retracting pull string and call it done. To be fair, we have never heard any of Jesse's pull string phrases before, so this is as accurate as it can be, but mainly because I want to keep her slim. And surprisingly, she does have some curves, so I slotted in some implants to imitate those curves. The pumps follow the same process as the head, sand, fill, paint, done. Speaking of the head, I painted her lips and applied some blush to her cheeks. Painted a little of her hair in case the yarn doesn't cover it entirely. And it's time for nightmare number two. 
hair rooting. Okay, I might have gone overboard, but I want to find the right shape of red because it's definitely not red. Her head is red, but her hair is orangey. So after doing some elimination by comparing it with the head, I ended up with this dirty orange. And we can start gluing some hair on. It's a repetitive process and I've done it in 1-6 scale, so you might want to check those videos out. The first half is done, time for the second half. Ta-da! I also did a couple of layers in front to bulk it up, and now we add some longer thread of yarn so we can tie her ponytail at the back. While comparing the ribbon from the signature collection Jessie, I realised that it's not a real tight on ribbon. It's just glued on, so I copied them. And after some trimming, some tying, snipping, we are ready. Overall, I'm really happy with this. I like the sculpt, I'm happy that the eye decals worked. I like how the hair turned out, but I don't think I can do it again anytime soon. Please don't ask me to make one for you. The outfit is a lot better, but not perfect. The green is still bugging me, the buttons are not accurate. I can't find a safe way to remove the boots, so that is not accurate either. And most importantly, it's not real denim. So I won't call it the most accurate Jessie. But the head is nice though. Well, it's good enough for now. If you like this, stay tuned to my channel for more creations. Here are some videos that you might like and I will see you next time.